Hi and welcome. I'm Will Christie from the Humanities Research Centre here at the Australian National University. And with me is Kate Flaherty from the Department of English here. What we're puzzling about today is why on Saturday the 23rd of April we're celebrating 400 years of William Shakespeare. Why are we still celebrating Shakespeare after 400 years is the question that I'm asking Kate today. What is the fascination of William Shakespeare? Why do we keep revisiting and in many ways keep reperforming this extraordinary playwright? Kate. Well, Shakespeare certainly does seem to be a really tenacious cultural topic. And whether that's because people love Shakespeare or hate Shakespeare or feel indifferent to Shakespeare, um, I think that it's worth investigating that tenacity. It, there are many ways of answering this question, but I guess for me it has to do with the responsiveness of Shakespeare's plays to the specific uh, political and cultural moment in which he was in which he was working, um, which made them particularly alive and vital. And it's that quality that imports so well into into future times, into, into any time in which it performs. So I've often described it as Shakespeare's plays uh, pick up the concerns of the moment um, like a magnet picks up iron filings. So you're suggesting then that it's a kind of paradox. What made him acutely topical is what makes him larger than, than the Elizabethan period, essentially. Yes. What, what Ben Jonson said, he was not for that age, but for yes. all, all time. Yes, so uh, I think it's, the, it's, it's two things. It's the, the precision with which he approached experience in his moment, but also some quality of undecidability about um, what side he came down on, if that makes any sense. So he doesn't make a particular political line really clear. He doesn't make a particularly clear moral stance. What he allows is play. And of course he wrote plays. And I think it's that quality of play, that intricate live quality of play uh, that, that keeps his plays enduring and, and playing with and in further uh, context. Yeah, but part of what, what, what the Romantics call negative, well, John Keats called negative capability, that sense in which Shakespeare could impersonate and would impersonate and enjoy impersonating any, any kind of character, as they said, light and shade. He was just totally responsive to individual characters, but what you're also suggesting to sort of different ideas and different immediate uh, pressures of, of the period. And, and of course he was writing to different immediate pressures because he was at once a playwright to the Queen. He had court performance, command performances, but also a playwright for this thriving new entertainment context, which is the public theatres in London, where you could come and see a play for a penny. So even an apprentice um, and an artisan could come in their lunch break and come see a play. So Shakespeare's writing to an extraordinarily diverse audience, perhaps a more diverse audience than any playwrights had ever written to in the past. And I think, again, that's where you get that undecidability, that yeah. kind of almost duck rabbit quality of yeah. Shakespeare's character. Has he kept that audience? Has he kept that, that variety in his audience? Or has there been a danger of sort of slipping into a, a kind of elitist you know, sort of mode so that it only becomes the province of scholars like you and me <laughs> or, or, or people who are particularly interested in so-called high culture or something like that? I think, I think that danger has definitely been um, seen at times. So what might be called a sacralisation of Shakespeare in the Victorian period that Shakespeare became associated with high art. And interestingly, one factor that created this was the distancing of the audience from the stage. So um, with theatre technology that permitted stage lighting and a separate stage space to the audience, which was so different to the globe where the audience was all around the stage, we have this physical distancing of the audience from the stage and going to the theatre becomes a kind of performance of status in itself. Yes. And I think yes. there's a whole lot of accretions uh, from that period that, that people today commonly associate with Shakespeare that really don't have very much to do 
with Shakespeare. But the other thing I observe is a kind of cycle where Shakespeare gets appropriated to make statements about high culture, but then then becomes the, the favourite the favourite thing to be reappropriated to yes, say what yeah. is popular. And an e example that leaps to mind immediately is uh, the Australian writers um, who, who wrote Just Macbeth for children, which um, my kids really enjoy. So that, it's kind of a kooky um, reappropriation by Andy Griffiths and Terry Denton of this high culture, but that's what makes it so ripe to yeah. make it so yeah. hilarious when it's yeah. reappropriated for popular culture. And indeed, if, if we started to talk about reappropriations, we would be here until <laughs> late at night and that yes. sort of thing. It is extraordinary. But it does say something, doesn't it, about Shakespeare himself, that he not just lends himself, but actually invites a kind of reappropriation. It goes back to what you were saying about the undecidability. It allows for different kinds of performance. It invites different kinds of performance yes. because it is difficult to put your finger on any one Shakespeare. This is what puzzled and has puzzled, I think, so many people over the years, has it not? As a person? As, or a, as, a, as, a, as a person, as a playwright, as but, but even as plays, they won't come down, they won't fix on any particular. I mean, yes. just when you want to make him into a conservative, a pro this, something else yes. happens within the play itself that just yes. seems to undermine or threaten yes. or qualify. That. And one of the ways I like to, to talk to my students about this is that um, it, it, if we think about Shakespeare and, and the form of blank verse, which everybody, yep. most people associate Shakespeare with verse, de dum de dum de dum de dum de dum iambic pentameter. And, and for many of my students, they arrive at it and think, why that? Why that? constraining structure of language and I talk about it as a container that a, 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 a container of convention that invention pushes out against mm. and without that containing structure the play the playfulness which I think is a key note sure. throughout all of Shakespeare's work doesn't have its play it needs something to push against and of course this is what Shakespeare constantly does with messing with the genre, creating something which was derogatorily called the tragic comedy. Um, it, it's, it's an attentiveness to rules that allows this delightful playfulness and, yeah. and breaking with rules and pushing against rules. And doesn't everybody love that? Like, doesn't that always make for a lot of fun? If, yeah. yeah. And the plays <laughs> itself celebrate their own playfulness yes. and quite self-consciously, yes, don't they? As the when they address the audience. It's the theatrical side of Shakespeare, isn't it, that we're coming back to again and again. That's what we're talking about, that undecidability, that, that, that fascination, that investment in just in people for their own sakes, a fascination with personality yes. and with dramatic tension and dramatic action yes. that doesn't actually want to push a particular political line or anything. That is, that's the, yes. the theatricality that keeps us coming back. Yes. And the theatre, Kate. It keeps one director after another director <laughs> wants to do it, wants to keep coming and seeing what yes. they can, as it were, squeeze out That's of the right. Shakespearean text. Yeah, or cut their teeth on. Or cut yes. their teeth. And I think we often forget that when Shakespeare was doing these things, they were being done for the very, very first time. So certainly we have yeah. the classical precedent, but the particular complexity of character interaction and that investment in what constitutes an individual consciousness is something that Shakespeare is playing with in, in radical ways for the very first time in, in a new public context where people don't have to be aristocratic to come and no. participate in, in, in thinking about this, in responding to this. So it's an utterly new forum that I think is, is constitutive of how we understand ourselves as human beings uh, right through to today. Right. So can we perhaps agree to say that because he was not one thing, because he was everything, he is constantly being rediscovered. And that's the reason why 400 years. There's certainly enough there. There's I mean, plenty it's, there. It's a bit like, uh, to me, it's, it's analogous to exploring, um, exploring galaxies or understanding DNA. There's enough there to keep us busy and thinking and learning new things about ourselves for a very, very long time to come. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. Thank you very much.